What happens when you take the normally fun and slightly challenging game of Kingdoms and Castles and mod it so that fires run rampant and are literally 1000% harder to put out? Your entire population are fat gluttons that eat 2.5 times the normal amount, like some kind of whale, but instead of krill, it's your economy, and droughts that plague your city almost endlessly that leave you with a filter that equates to playing the game while looking through a mason jar full of hot urine. Needless to say, this was tough. Now, we do have some goals here. By the end of these long, long 100 years, we need to A, reach a happiness level of 100 at least once, 2, maintain a healthy relationship with our neighbors to avoid an early demise via catapult and mobile archer unit, and finally, bullet point three, sail out to another island to start a new colony. So welcome aboard, and I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, before I knew about any of these trials and tribulations that would age me faster than the US president, I set out to make my world. I searched and searched through countless maps, big and small, slender and girthy. Although they all shared one similar theme, I just thought they were too grand, too gargantuan even. I needed something more down to earth, more average. And then I found it, the perfect sized island. It had everything I could ever want, a white rock, a reddish brown rock, and not to mention growth in all the right places. So I placed my keep and off we went. Part one, hungry beginnings. Right off the bat, I could already see the effects of the difficulty mod, which for gameplay and canonical reasons, I will be referring to as simply the tapeworm. One of the most notable parts of this mod, besides the dramatic increase in carrion lizards, is that it increases the food consumption of your civilians by two and a half percent. Nice. And these boys already eat a lot. The starting supplies the game provides you with so you don't, you know, die was gone before I knew it. These small, chunky embodiments of gluttony had eaten themselves out of house and home. You know, if they had built a home. In fear they would turn to eating the building supplies, I quickly constructed what I am going to call the slums. I built a small row of hovels and a few farms in an attempt to appease my people, which granted me all but 14 happiness. Not a lot, but one small step closer to our goal of 100. I quickly realized that even these farms weren't going to be enough, so I promptly expanded my agriculture to even more farms and fishing ports. Which, let me tell you about these fish people. These guys stink. Boo! You stink! It's like these fishermen were never really taught how to fish, and instead cumulatively decided that trying to ram into the schools of them is the best way to kill and then capture them. Every time I check on these huts, it always says that they've caught a whopping zero fish. Why not? Upset and frustrated at my dock worker's prevalent lack of skill, I switched focus to try to increase my population, but as it appears, the low IQ has quickly spread throughout the kingdom and taken a strong foothold inside the gray matter of my builders. I know this because this manor has been under construction for at least five years. As my tapeworm-ridden idiot civilians die from starvation one by one, I desperately needed a place to allow my population to grow and flourish. After many stern talking to's and bribery via strange black powder, the builders have constructed the first manor and spread the farms out to actually try and feed the parasites that infect our population's small, small, chunky bodies. After a rougher start than I'm used to, I can honestly say that the city has stabilized and is in no immediate threats of famine or mass homelessness. Everything's on fire. That was until the game's A+. Plus first grade pyrotechnic maniac with a real, real bad personality problem came strolling in. The first dragon attack was here, and without any real defensive towers or badass scythe-wielding dragon statues to tempt these giant flying freaks away, we were in trouble. Much like Airbnb, this dragon decided to cripple our housing market, and if that wasn't bad enough, this absolute unit decided to pull a quick U-turn mid-air and attempted to Tokyo drift our settlement into famine. So that way, our peasants were not just homeless, but also starving. Where that dragon had failed, the game had already loaded up plan B, a viking raid and another dragon back to back, who was on an absolute bender and wiped out an entire field in one shot. We were the helpless victims of a trolley problem, but all the tracks led to our island. See, do you remember in the intro when I said fires are a thousand percent stronger? I wasn't lying. During times of drought, which we are in currently, as seen by the absolutely awful apple juice filter the game has dumped over the entire screen. My eyes! This fire spread through my city like herpes in a homeless shelter. This started with what I will deem the 30 year famine in which I watched my population die one by one, 
which is quite depressing, especially when you tried to download the Eat the Dead mod, but it doesn't work for some reason, so all these lovely dinners that our cemetery caretaker was cooking up for us were going to waste and just decomposing. Part 3. Revolution. These next 25 years were a godsend. These peasants had been through a lot, so I took the game's blessing of no more dragon attacks for the next 9 years, and through creative and careful civil planning, I managed to stabilize my kingdom. And no, I didn't just sit there for 9 years waiting for a population. That would be absolutely preposterous. By year 33, we really had the manpower to get some stuff done, so we did. I rearranged jobs a little bit, and then I added 3 new houses, an archer tower, a library, small market, town square, and another tavern, all in an effort to keep my population happy and healthy. The fact that the attacks we were getting during this time period were also not monstrously catastrophic was a super big help. I forgot to mention, this mod also adds earthquakes, but I don't really see any of those. Sometimes at the start of the year, you just kind of hear stuff breaking and just kind of hope for the best. So we should be fine on that front. Also, one of my civilians either has dementia or has decided to go on some sort of faux hunger strike because while they were on the verge of death due to hunger pains, she also ate too much recently. I'm not the smartest guy around, but that math does not add up. Shortly after we were visited by our neighbor and she promptly told us that she is a mafia crime boss and will be taking protection money from us. But there's a catch. There is no protection. I believe they call this robbery. The effects of the 30 year famine can still be felt throughout the kingdom, although I'm starting to think it's just my bad leadership because we have the food, the populace just doesn't want to get to the food. So I added some stone roads to see if that would help. We finished this Age of Prosperity off by constructing the Gravy Boat, a wall-mounted cauldron that I can only assume is full of a hot Thanksgiving staple and nothing else. Part 4. Bad Times Just like one of Newton's rough ideas states, every good time has an equal and opposite smackdown via AI game mechanics. This was pretty much 25 years of playing catch-up where the only thing getting accomplished was the AI's newfound way to bully me. The game starts off its barrage of haymakers by sending first a dragon into the center of my keep, and destroying the food storage where, for the most part, all of our food was. Then, during the same year, Vikings began to finish off what was left of our island. They burned our orchards and left us with about 50% food production. Luckily, this game is part pay to win, so as long as my money kept coming in uninterrupted, I would be fine. That was, until this... All she does is rob me and f***ing lie. <clears throat> Very nice woman came sailing in and told us to pay up or face the consequences. Not wanting to catch the hands of another AI adversary, I coughed up the dough. Then, after all that, I guess the Vikings weren't done with us, and they decided that they would burn pretty much all of the orchards we had left. These events took our city down to sub-30 happiness. I then did the only thing I knew how to. I threw a crazy block party to distract these peasants from the poverty they would soon be living in for their foreseeable future. I then made the greatest discovery. If you zoom out far enough, you cannot see or hear your people suffering. So I will now be playing this game from a reasonable distance. And after all that, we started to rebuild again. We managed to add a handful of new things, along with a theater, some iron farms, a couple new houses, and a cannon. This increased our population again to 250, and awarded us with the new prestigious city title. We managed to fend off the next viking attack, and as if I didn't already have enough on my plate, I decided to add a little bit more. So I jumped ship, constructed an expedition boat, and set sail. Part 5. The Struggle of Fishtown Our main island was looking... okay? except for the mass kidnapping of women and children, but we'll ignore that. We have new lands to explore and conquer. Oh! Oh dear. During our colony's first raid, the Vikings managed to wipe out 75% of the island's population, and now we only have three people available to work. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why one of them is not working. I'm going to chalk this up to yet another hunger strike, as this seems to be the theme of the video. But what this means is essentially I only have two working people, and also my island will soon be filled with crazy rabid inbred peasants. So let us allow that island to work itself out, and look at something a little more productive. The lower wall has started, and I think it's only fair that I call this part the cup, for obvious reasons. 
Unfortunately, I knew this wall was not going to stop the Vikings, so I threw yet another party for my citizens to try to cheer them up before the mass non-consensual exodus of people via the hands of the Viking raiders. We're moving pretty fast through this part, and we've got 10 more years till we beat this challenge, and things are going pretty good. The population has jumped back up on our colony island, and we managed to build a lot more of the island up. We've got one more Viking attack lined up, but with 100% happiness and the final task of our challenge accomplished, nothing could stop us except for that one catapult guy, but he was promptly dealt with. Ah! With our population on Fishy Stinky Island growing, the food supplies backing up out of the top of our granaries, and our fortifications being built, I'd say this challenge was a success. This video was a lot of fun to make, and I enjoyed doing something a little different with A-Roll and B-Roll, and I would really like to thank everybody who watched all the way through. I really enjoyed talking to you all, so leave a comment if you want. It makes my day, honestly. This one took a lot longer than my normal ones, and I hope this shows. If you really, really liked it, consider subscribing. It would mean a lot. And it would let me know that this is kind of the kind of content that you guys would like to see more of. This is Varus, and I'll catch you in the next one.